Welcome to Super Soul Sisters. My name is Oluka Jamila and you're watching UBC TV live inspiring Uganda. Super Soul Sisters is one of those programs you should never miss because in this program we talk about women, the women who have made it in life, the women who are out there ready to inspire the young girls. And in this program we air it every Wednesday at around 9 p.m. live here on UBC TV. However, we want to give thanks to Dotash for giving us such a beautiful place where we can, you know, interact with you freely. This particular show is a unique show because we have put it in the month of women. As we celebrate women, I cannot leave out one of the most exceptional women that I have met in my life. Someone who is doing something unique that I believe that once she shares with you, you will be intrigued, you will be welcoming her idea. And she's one of the agroecologists that we have in this country. I mean, practicing agro agroecology means being a farmer, being an entrepreneur, something that is very unique, which I believe that after this show, you will be happy to, to join. And she's here, and welcome to the show, Madam Sarah Kabi. You're most welcome to Super Soul Sisters. My name is Nkabi Sarah. I'm an agroecologist, I'm a farmer, I'm an entrepreneur, yeah. That, that is very interesting. You know, when I was saying that uh, you are an agroecologist, an entrepreneur, and a practicing person, you know, I wanted you to tell me more. So, before going into agroecology, agro you know, entrepreneurship, practicing all these farmers, um, uh, businesses, I want to first know, who is Sarah Kavi? Uh, Sarah is a simple, I can say simple girl, because I was once a girl. Okay, yes. I, I can say simple lady. Mm. Uh, I was born 53 years ago. Wow. And this last month, this very month, on the 12th, that I celebrated my 53rd birthday. Wow. I was born in Kamori district uh, to my father, Ignatio Chamber and my mother, Topista Nandasi. Uh, my family, my dad was a polygamist. Yes. Uh, who had many wives, but for my mom, we were born eight children, and I'm the last, I'm the baby among the eight children. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I can see you you look like one of those babies who were pampered, nurtured, made assertive. You know there's actually um a saying that last bones are more successful. Last bones always learn a lot from the elder ones. Mm -hmm. And I believe maybe you're one of those people. So briefly, uh, I'll also tell you that Kamul is one of those uh, districts that powerful women come from. So I'm not surprised when I see you, <laughs> very powerful. <laughs> so uh, I would like you to tell me and also tell the audience out there, which schools did you go to? Uh, during the time when I was growing up, I think this thing of nursery school mm. was not a trend. It was not there. So I didn't go to a nursery school. Uh, Okay, to reverse a little bit. Yes. I did not go with my mother and my father because of issues I didn't know at that time. But I came to grow up with my auntie, my, pater, my paternal uh, auntie, mm. who was working as a senior midwife in Ginger Hospital. So I grew up uh, in the quarters of Ginger Hospital about my my school history, I didn't do, I didn't attend nursery school. I started my primary school from Magua Primary School in Jinja, from primary one up to primary seven. Only that during my primary time, I had to repeat one class, which was primary five. I, I realized why I had to repeat that class. We shall talk about that. <laughs> uh, then for secondary school, I went to Ginger Girls School, which now is called the PMM. Yes. Mm, the, the, change, the name was changed to PMM. Uh, from there, I joined Shimon Koa PTC. The Shimoni, that the, fem yes. the, the, the famous Shimoni. Yes, Shimoni. Yes. I'm, a, I'm a retired teacher. Wow. Yes. That is great. That's why I said I'm like 
Yes. I'm, a, I'm like a, a, a ball. Yes. I can mm. roll in all sides. Sure. So I went to Shimoni for my grade three certificate to train as a teacher. After which I started teaching. Then I went for upgrading at Lugazi University where I attained my diploma in education. And thereafter, I completed my, I enrolled with a bachelor's degree in education, which I completed at Tim University. Yeah, that's all I can say about my education. Wow, that is great. So basically, um, you've told us about your education, looks exciting and everything. <laughs> so uh, it's very interesting to know that you went through all those steps of school, but I just want to take you a little bit behind. Uh, how was it like, how were you as a child, at least the bits you remember from the time you started understanding as a young girl? Because you talk about growing up in Kamuli, back then there were no nursery schools, there were no shuttles to pick you to go to school. Uh, you, you, I, I imagine even the kind of bags you carried to school were different from the ones we have now, the kind of company. Like, tell us a little bit of your childhood. How was it like, you know, going to primary school? Whom did you used to go with? Uh, coming back from school, what are those things that are significant that you can tell us as a child uh, during primary and, you know, being at home? During my childhood, yes. Uh, there is one bit of, one part of life that I really enjoyed most. Mm. It was playing, <laughs> playing, I would play. I used to play. That's why even I mentioned somewhere where I had to repeat a class. Yes. Because of being cheeky and playful in mm. class. Mm. Um, as I was growing up when I was a child, I didn't grow up from Kamuli. I just was told I was brought to Jinja to stay with my auntie when I was around two years. So from that time, I was staying with her. Uh, during the time when we were growing up, especially me where I was coming from, we used to go to school on foot. This thing of vans was not, was not common, was, wasn't there at all. The shuttles, the shuttles were not there. Or border borders. The border borders were not there. Then the boarding schools were also very few, hmm. very few. During that time, going to school barefooted, was okay. And I also used to go to school barefooted. Wow. In a town school, in the town, you know Jinja? Yes, Jinja in is town one school. of those first yes. districts. Yes. But the shoes those days were not there. They were for rich children. Eh? Mm. And sometimes when you, you would go to school, when you are put on shoes, your friends even look at you and start laughing <laughs> at you. Eh? Because you are looking funny and different from them. Mm. So I used to go to school barefooted. And uh, with that, also, we used to do many things, especially at home, with this thing of having maids yes. was not there, and we used to do the work or the house activities by ourselves. We had to time ourselves so that you don't get to reach school when it's late, so because you would be punished. Mm. By that time, the Chiboko was really working for latecomers. <laughs> now, after school, uh, Madam Sarah, you know, there's, uh, when, when you tell me about how you grow up and everything, it gives me a picture of, you know, these children going to school when they are on, barefooted, barefooted, and then they go there, they come playing on the road mm -hmm. and, on, on, and all that. When you get home, you know, you have to do the chores and everything. What about, like, in that primary school, because you have all the seven years yes. up to P7, yeah. outside school during holidays, how was Sarah like as a child? Before mm. we talk about the holidays, mm. at school, our school was, a, a, it had, had a big piece of land. So we had a lot of activities that were being done, especially the games. We had fields for netball, there were fields for football and other activities. So we used to play. Like I said, playing mm. was part of me. I would even miss food because I had to play. Okay, now since you've said you'd miss food, so what really made you, because you said you repeated P5, so what was it that made you repeat P5? Ah, my repeating P5, in our class, my primary five class, we had streams. Mm. But then in the stream where I was sitting, I was sitting with my friends. Ah, okay. 
Okay. So we would play. As a teacher was teaching, we were busy playing. Mm. And then one thing, I had my elder sister who bought for me textbooks. But then, mistakenly, one of the textbooks she bought was a teacher's uh, answer book. Wow. So when it came to mathematics, for us, instead of listening to the teachers she was teaching, we knew we had the, books with, the book with the answers. Mm. So when time came <laughs> for, for putting the answers, we would just go open the book and write the what? The because answer. we knew mm. that exercise A mm. is followed by exercise B. Mm. Yes. So we just, my friend, when time came for exams, mm. end of year P5, <laughs> P yes. my friends had passed and I was the one who had the book and I had failed. I had to repeat P5. Oh, God. That's how I came to repeat P5. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing that. Now, that like after P uh, primary, uh, could you also tell us your experience in secondary schools? Because what I know is when you look back then, there was a lot of child dropout from school due to pregnancy, uh, things of menstruation, used to make some girls drop out of school. So you coming out, to the level of university and you know being an entrepreneur that you are today uh, you could tell us a little bit how was your experience being in all level during my all level i then i had shifted from my auntie's place to my elder sister's house and it was just a few meters from the school it was a like a five minutes walk to mm -hmm. the school so I was not getting a lot of challenges, me as a, as a person, though there still had to be these small, small issues of people calling, not people, boys, boys calling you men, around, eh. men, men, <laughs> men were not serious at that time, but these... Your same age mates. Yeah, those mm. same age mates. Mm. Because we had a, a neighboring school that was... A, for a single sex. I was at a single sex school, which, Ginger which Girls. Which school was that? Ginger Girls, Ginger, yes. Ginger, Ginger says yes. was a single sex school for boys and the population was very big. Mm. In fact, as we were leaving school in the evening, we even used to fear to meet them on their way. <laughs> that means that after the bell goes, we had to run home because they were moving in big numbers and wow. we would fear them. Mm. And uh, then also during my secondary school time we used to study in shifts uh, from senior two and three they used to study from from one to five then in the morning we had senior senior three four five and six mm. in, our, in most school, schools that's how they were the timetable was working so in the evening if you've studied during day you don't have to go back in the evening no you would go for your session mm. have classes then go back home yeah. So, uh, Madam Sarah, that's very interesting. Personally, I mean, the, the schools I went to, we had to study all the way. Like from 8.30, go for a break, go for lunch break, and then go for evening break, then go for, you know, for, um, for preps in mm -hmm. the evening. So when you tell me that your O level like, was like that, then, I mean... And mm. also to add on, mm. I think it's also helped us to learn to do the home activities because we had the time. Mm. For instance, when I was in senior one and senior two, I had to all, do all the morning work at home mm. and leave when lunch is already cooked. Re lunch is ready for whoever would come back for lunch. Then I would go and have my classes in the, in the afternoon. Ah, okay. Let me, let, let me take you back a bit. Yes. You talked about uh, doing home chores and you yes. said cooking alone. Nowadays, I know that you also have neighbors and we have sisters and brothers and, and our friends who have children. Um, they, they do other chores, but not like the way you've explained. So maybe you could tell me and explain to me, apart from cooking, what are those other things that you did that you are proud of to date? I'm not bragging, mm. but I'm a good cook. <laughs> yes. Eh? I, I'm a good cook. Why? Mm. One of my sons one time told their friend, that if you want to eat something nice, come to our house. Mommy can cook. I'm like, <laughs> okay. I didn't know I could cook mm. that well. Mm. Uh, I also used to do other activities, but cooking is part of my favorite. Yeah, that, that was your yes, interest. Yes, because mm. when I was growing up, we used to do a lot of tokotoko. You know tokotoko? 
Not really. You not not toko toko. Oh, you not toko so. We will get some small tin. Hmm. Look for matoke somewhere in the house when you are young like ah, this. Ah yes yes yeah, those yes. things of cooking of cooking cooking, cooking uh -huh. games. Uh -huh. eh? they mm. they you still you even would. go still cooking while well, still some so, half tomato. Mm. We were always told to stop cooking because they were afraid that maybe one time we may cause a fire in the house. Yes, or, yes. But for us, we didn't have anything like that in the mind. Uh, with the, this cures that I would do at, during secondary school, it was not only cooking, but everything at home. Mm -hmm. You program, mopping, yes, doing utensils, then there is the cooking, everything. And then sweeping and the compound. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. In, in secondary school, mm. We were back from primary, the, the, like I told you, I grew up in Ginger. We had those streets in Ginger that are there, mm. and we had street lights. Yes. Uh, during the time of Nseneni, mm. we, we used to go out and pick Nseneni, <laughs> even at night. Mm. And what I can compare, what I can say, the world was still safe at that time. Mm. Because these things of uh, somebody, be a, a girl being... Defiled or what? They were they were not there at that time. I think the society has just gone bad, maybe of recent. But during our days, mm. they were not. So common. you could just you know leave your house, not leave, go with your sisters yes. and, uh, and a maybe neighbor neighbors, yes, and yes. The neighbors, yeah. And then go and get uh, insane uh -huh. until morning, until when they not stop. Not until you know. morning. Mm. <laughs> We had a limit somewhere. Yes. Yeah. They, but sometimes we would go with the elders, eh? mm. but they wouldn't walk with you wherever you're going, but they would at least watch you. Okay. Yeah. From all level, uh, during I think my vacation, let me say I was attracted to some, somebody. Mm. And this guy was from university, Makere University. Mm. And during the time when you were growing up, we used to sing, and uh, the song would say, Wange Gwendi Fumbiru Asomerawa, Asomerawa University. Mm. So when this guy came up out, I said, uh, maybe this is the man that mm. I, I'm supposed to do what? To go with, I branched from studies, mm. I had to sit at home. Mm. Yeah, because of the challenges that had come up, and uh, I started having my children with him, mm. No introduction, no wedding, nothing. Ah, we, we had to branch somewhere. So we had to, to, to continue with life. So at what age did you get children and all that? I'm interested to know if you don't mind sharing that bit of it. I'm, I'm, I'm a judge of two, of, of two, of two grandchildren. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I have grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes. I think it was at the age of 20. Mm. Yeah, at the age of 20 when I had my first born. Mm. Uh, then I had a second born. Then I had a third born. They started schooling. In the process, I also had got a fourth born yes. some years later. Mm. Yeah. So how did you, okay, from senior, for because you talked in the beginning, you had said that uh, you went through secondary and then you went to the, you became a teacher and then you went and upgraded. So yes. now from, from that time when you, 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 you branched, wh at what point did you realize that you needed to go back to school to make your life better? Because from the way you're talking, you must have been that kind of child who was like, Come rain, come sun, sunshine, even if I'm with a, a person from Makere University, yes, yes, I still yes. have to better my life. So at what point did you realize? I think at first I thought I was comfortably settled. Not until I one day sat down and realized that the person I'm living with is a graduate and uh, educated to some level. And he was working in a big office in Mokono. So I'm like, ah. As if we, are, we, we may not be matching really. Mm. What of one time, I, I, this person said that this person is too low for my, for mm. my level. Won't I be dumped or mm. left out? <laughs> I'm like, no, mm. sir. Zukuka, mm. I had to wake up and uh, go back to, I went back to, to my O-level school to pick my results because even, I hadn't even picked them before. Wow. After so, how long? Oh, it was over <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> yes. Mm. <laughs> it was over 10 years. Mm. I had to go and pick them. Mm. Then I picked the results. 
I started thinking of what to do next. But in our neighborhood, there was a lady, and that lady was married to a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. Our neighborhood in Mokono. That's yes. when we, we, had, we had moved to Mokono by that time. Mm -hmm. And she was a friend. We had these other club group groups of in the village. We would do sit and collect some funds and do that. So we had been interacting with her. So one time I saw her moving with Manila's. Mm. And uh, she was putting on a uniform. I'm like, ah, she passed. She, 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 we greeted and she went. Then another day it stopped. I'm like, please, let's share something. She stopped. I'm like, eh, I always see you passing me here mm. every evening. What is, what is really going on? She told me, ah, mm. ah. Will you manage these things? You want money? I'm like, you manage, I will manage. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she was a little older than me. I'm mm. like, if she's managing, why not me? Yes. <laughs> then um, I had to get the information from her. She told me she was pursuing a grade three certificate in education at Shimoni. She gave me the details. And luck enough, the interviews were just forthcoming. Mm. I'm like, OK. Then I'm like, ah, when I tell this guy, will she allow me to go? Or well, no, will he allow me to go? Or mm. will he tell me to, to stay around and cook the food? I'm like, let me see first. So uh, I told the lady, she's called Susan, to give me the details of when there would be admissions in Shimoni, which mm. she did. I went for the interviews. The number was big. And the... The children who are applying were these ones from senior four, the, those <laughs> young, young ones. I'm like, no, even if they are young, yeah, I, I can don't. also... Mm, education continue. has no age yes. limit. So, uh, I went with my straight, my hair, mm. the, straight, the straight palm. It mm -hmm. was long. And at that school, they used to cut off the hair. So as they were interviewing me, they asked me, Madam, how about that hair that you have on your head? I said, it's okay. If it's, it's I, I can always remove it from the said fine. Uh, they, we went outside, then they called me back for my admin. They had granted me a place. Wow. Yeah, mm. that's how I joined. And how did you, like, after, after like, joining? But before mm. joining uh, the teaching school, school mm. I was engaging, I used to engage in business. Mm. During that time when you had branched, I yes. call that branching. Yes, yes. during the branch, <laughs> on, on my branch. It's okay. On, my on your branch, branch yes. Yeah, so I, what, what is that business that you used business, to do on your branch? I used to mm. sell charcoal. Mm. I used to sell firewood. Mm. I used to sell matoke. I had a grocery somewhere. Yeah, in yes. Mukono In still. Mukono still. Mm. Yeah, by that time, I had asked a neighbor, mm to give me some space. So she gave me some space, I put there my chivanda. Mm. So it was at that chivanda where I was working, mm. where I used to see my friend, what? Uh -huh. Passing by. Mm. So if it hadn't been that chivanda, maybe I wouldn't have seen her. And you wouldn't have been here yes. today. Wow, interesting. I'm very intrigued about what happened next, like when you joined the Shimoni. Because remember, you were this lady who had branch, you were used to your life, you're doing your business, your small business, and then, you know, your husband taking care of you. Now you have to join school with young girls and young, young men, like people who are almost uh, like your kid sisters or kid brothers. Mm -hmm. How, what was your experience like? I first took you at my place at Shimoni. Mm -hmm. Then I went ahead to tell my husband that hey, you know. So before, before, you didn't first ask for ah, permission. You went with evidence. Yes, I have <laughs> secured a place. Mm. Now he is going to, where, where is, who, 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 why did you go with that? Tell me, I thought maybe you would refuse me to go there. Mm. And like, where is going, the money going to come from? Uh, we shall see. Mm. So I told him after I had joined. And uh, the challenge was that the school was entirely boarding. Mm. But then, on admission, there were some people who were considered to come from outside. Mm. That's what gave me the energy. Because even my, my friend, Susan, was also coming from outside. Mm. She was not a boarder. 
Yes. So I said, okay, since she's also coming from Mokona, I'll, I'll, I'll also be going with her. Mm. When we reached there, we found that there were some other mothers who had also joined. I was not alone. Mm. Yeah, we were many. <laughs> <laughs> we Most were of many. you who had first branched. Yes, we were back. many. I can mm. say we were more than 10. Wow. Yeah. Mm. The challenge maybe that I used to face was uh, I was used to my things, doing my things at home. Mm. Never had to leave home. Everybody, every day in the morning, to and board. what time would, would it be like? Because, you know... Classes used to begin at 8. At 8, ah, okay. Yeah, but that time there was, the jam was not so much like it is, it, it is now. And the taxis, did you, were you able to get a taxi? What, what kind of means did you use, we to used, use? I used to use a taxi. Mm. I used to use a taxi. But that meant leaving home very early. So we had a group of day scholars. Yes. Yeah, and we had to, to perform and impress the administration that much as we are the married and the mm. old, but we can also outcompete the young ones. And in fact, during some of the exams that we, 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 we were given mm. at two different points, two different out the scholars had to ex excel and we were number one. Wow. Yeah, they would be the first in out of 300 uh, mm. students. Because you had come to school when yes, you know what you were. But now and... I'm interested in you. Mm. Did you, like, tell me about your experience? Like, I want to know, like, from the time you entered school, how was it like? Because finally you're saying that you got friends, but in terms of, you know, coping up. Because, you know, when you take time to go back to school, there are those challenges. But I'm what? telling you, I was mm. not alone. Mm. And we had our group. So what would you do in your group? We would do share experiences, of course. Mm. We came to learn. I have this number of children for me, my husband, <laughs> this. You know that's a of married day. Yeah. So we had to share that mm. and also to encourage one another mm. so that none of us would drop out of the course before it is done. Mm. Yes. And how long was the course? It was two years. In it those two, two years. years. So in those two years, I'm just intrigued to know, because ah. if you're a married woman, by that time, uh, you never got any child, you, you never got any challenges at home, or you had some, any challenges? No, mm. I didn't have challenges as such. Mm. I, I had made up my mind to mm. pursue this, what? Certificate in education, mm. so that I could learn somewhere and uh, get a job mm. also to, to, to have a, somewhere to work. And, and what about now the business? The business, I had to leave it. I had to leave the business because I was the one who used to go to purchase mm -hmm. the things from the villages, so it couldn't continue. So after, after getting the certificate, what happened uh, next? Let me tell you one thing about before getting the certificate. Mm. When we did exams for year one, mm. there was a challenge, there was a cutoff. Point? Yes. Mm. You would either repeat year one, or, or if you had passed, you would have you had to go to year two. Mm. Ha. We had to come and check on the Nazi board. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes. but you do cruise quickly to see whether you'd land on your name somewhere. Mm. I landed on my name. Mm. I had passed. I think you jubilated and you're to like, year yes. two. Yes. Yet those younger boys and girls, some of, many of them failed. After finishing the course, what happened next? I got a vacancy. I was considered, and uh, then I was given a school to start working in Mokono. Mm. Yeah. So did you request to be in Mokono? Because, you know, once they give, they just deploy you anywhere. Yeah, for primary schools, mm -hmm. they don't normally do it countrywide, like the secondary school. Mm. They just they normally give people within the, mm. the area where they, maybe they are staying, not very far, mm. not very far. So I had to work in Mokono because also my husband was working in Mokono. I started teaching, and I've been teaching. I also upgraded as I was teaching. Mm. Uh, not until like two years ago, mm. when I thought about applying for early retirement, which I did and I was granted. So I, st I stopped teaching last year. I was teaching in government schools. So Only government schools? Yeah. Which schools were those? Uh, I taught at St. Augustine's Primary School, the school near the church, 
they are in Seta, after Seta High. Mm. Then I also taught at Bishop Central Primary School. Mm. I was a teacher at Chiroza Primary School. Then I also taught at Peter Clever mm. Junior Primary School near Namiriango College. Oh, wow. So how many yeah. years have you been teaching? Uh, it's close to 20 years. Wow. Yeah. Teaching all subjects and in all classes. The only class that I have not taught during my, my career is the primary one. Mm. But I've taught in primary, from primary one, from primary two mm. up to primary seven. I've been teaching primary seven uh -huh. for a long wow. time. At what point did you join university? And what inspired you to join university? You know, in those uh, schools where we teach, eh? mm. sometimes they are, you can g get promotion mm. when you have attained a certain level of education. Mm. Mm. But for one, I was not chasing any, any promotion. I just <coughs> wanted to also be like other ladies from step one to step two, mm. then until I reach the extent of the level of attaining a degree. Yeah. Wow. At what point did you attend a degree? Like, I need to know how long did you uh, teach and then when? I taught from 2005 until 2007 mm. when I enrolled for a diploma in mm. education. Mm. When I qualified in 2010, I was not in school. Then uh, 2018, I then enrolled for a bachelor's degree which I completed in 2021. Wow. Yep. So that means COVID also affected your education? Yeah, I mean. COVID really. By the time the first wave of COVID came, mm. we had just came back to our bachelor's course. Then the school, there was no more schooling, no more lectures, but we had to get means of what? Of continuing because we, we had something to, we had a target. Mm. I use, I, 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 me and my friends continued having group work, not until we, time for exams came and we started for exams. Mm. Yeah. But then it's still during the COVID, during COVID time, my husband passed away. So that's another, another challenge that I faced. During so what, the how was it like, like you, you are here, I'm just imagining you are trying to get yourself together to do a, a master's, I mean, to do bachelor's. a bachelor's degree, and then you get such sad news. So how did it, you briefly tell us, like, describe, how was it like? It was very unbecoming, mm. yeah. But did you continue with your education even afterwards? Yes, I continued because we, are, we, had, we were almost left with like a few months to, go to, to, work, to graduate. Mm. Yeah, that's how it came. So we are still here with Madame Sarah Kabi, one of the best, best people you should actually be watching here on this particular month that we are celebrating women, she really deserves to be celebrated as one of those ladies who has triumphed, who has come out from grace, from grass to grace, from you know nowhere to somewhere, someone who is doing something unique in Uganda that so many people are not aware of, uh, that is agroecology, uh, enter entrepreneurship and business and practice. So what you see us using here, it's all from Dot Touch. Right now, we'll go for a break, but keep watching UBC TV Inspiring Uganda. My name is Jamila Oluka. Welcome back from the break. My name is Jamila Oluka, and you're watching Super Soul Sisters right here on UBC TV Inspiring Uganda. And before we went for a break, we were having a very interesting chat with uh, Madame Sarah Nkabi, one of the ladies who is doing something very unique in Uganda, that is agroecology. Now, you've got this degree. And sorry for the loss of your husband. Your husband has died now. When did you say, now I want to be an agroecologist? Well, mm. I have been doing these things hand in hand. Mm. It has not just come to me as a something new, mm. but this is something I've been doing all along. One, I remember during my childhood, at our house near the junior hospital, we had a small garden of vegetables. Mm. 
But then people would come around to ask for vegetables from our, from us so that they can pick and gun cook. Then I'm like, way back people used to look for vegetables. Even today, vegetables have still kept on being liked by everybody. Only that it's expensive, people cannot afford it. Mm. So as I was carrying, carrying out my education career, I've also been in, engaged in agriculture, yes. So I'm a farmer who keeps livestock, who does gardening, and then business and value addition. So the gardening, just uh, I want to know the gardening, you do it yourself or you employ people? All right. Yes. I, I engage in urban farming. Mm. I'm an urban farmer. Uh, this is something I have done for more than five years. So what's the difference between urban farming and the other, other farming? Oh, urban mm. farming, yeah. Mm. Urban farming, this is whereby you have a small set place, a setup of a place, mm. and you grow crops that can be, can suit in that small part, space of that mm. you have at that time. It can be backyard mm. or front yard, because for me, I use the front and the back mm. for my, my farming. Yes. Yes, whereby I grow vegetables and fruits wow. in a small piece of land, mm. which is about 50 by 200, mm. yeah. Wow, so the things that you used to sell, to grow, you used to sell them or just for house consumption? I can say both, mm. I can say both. One, I started it for my, for my house mm. so that we can consume those vegetables easily and more available than, mm. yeah. Mm. But then in the process, I also get some people who want them to buy them. So I end up selling some of them, yeah. Wow, interesting. Now, since you've told us about that, I want now to know how did you start to the level that now when when i see you when i you you google about sarah you can see sarah in her shop selling all these spices all these things so how did you start that now now with uh, this urban farming like i said i started it one i first one time i went to the doctor's place mm. and he advised me to get to to eat vegetables every day mm. i'm like what i need the vegetables a day on my diet but how, where will I be buying them from? Mm. Where, where, by, where we stay, there are no, it's not easy to get vegetables. They don't sell them unless you go to the market, which is a little far, mm. and you have to put to get a border border to go and buy. Mm. So instead of going to buy, I changed the setting of my house. I removed the flowers that were looking so nice, yes, beautiful, beautiful, mm. but I was not eating them. <laughs> so I replaced them with vegetables. That is how I started. Mm. What type of the vegetables were you putting there? All right, I mm. vegetables. I grow dodo. Mm. Uh, I grow. There are these small dodos that you can pick from the ground. Mm. I have a plant which is very big bigger than this machine mm. there, mm. where like when I'm harvesting one time, I can pick one side, mm. then the following day I pick another side. Uh -huh. So I have such plants, then I plant gobe. Mm. I do my urban farming in uh, bovera. I, call, I don't call them bovera, mm. the black ones. Yes. So I call them gardens. Yeah, they're gardens. I call Kitchen them gardens, gardens. Mm. yes. So I can use the old tires, mm. where they, they, after cutting these, shoes, uh, the Karamajong shoes, eh? yes. those tangira. Mm. Then the thin layer of the wheel, that, the tire that st remains, yes. I use it at a garden, plant skuma, there is gobe, there is uh, dodo, I sometimes even grow the strawberries, mm. eggplants, like that. Mm. Yeah, variety of them. But apart from the vegetables, you also deal in uh, spices and then other things like soya cereals so how did you start that now because from the vegetable kitchen gardens mm. you something must have treated you like okay let us let me go and start this how did you start that when you're doing business mm. you have to consider what what you think people uh, can use daily for example with the, with the food people mm. have to eat every day at first, I used to, I had a boutique, but having a boutique, you can, somebody can buy a dress and takes another three months or four, 
mm. without buying another dress. Even a year. Even a year. <laughs> but then when you're dealing with food stuff, people have to eat breakfast, lunch, evening, and at, at whatever time. Mm. So I looked at something that was not common around. That's why I started dealing in spices. Mm. Yes. Because it's something that is, de is used daily in everybody's kitchen. You have mm. to find spices. T t take us through that journey, because I want to know from the time you started getting them, where you get them, how, and you know, take us through that. The Spices, I'm a member of Slow Food Uganda, Uganda mm. which is an international organization. Uh, our headquarters are found in Italy, mm. but for us in Okono, we have a, an office in Nabuti. Mm. So as a member of Slow Food, we have other, member, other members in the group that grow some of these spices. Mm. So I outsource from them in order to give them, to get market for them so that they can sell because I have a store mm. which I established so I, I can, where I sell those spices from. Mm, yeah. Okay. So when did you join the Slow Food? My joining Slow Food was incidental. Mm. On, on my village, I, I'm, a, I'm a member of the LC1 committee. Mm. So there was a survey that we were doing around, and I went to the district headquarters and found that there was a market. So I got interested in the market mm. to ask what was really going on. Mm. So one of the persons I contacted is a guy called Medi, told me about the market, that this is a slow food market, we, in, we deal in the organic key products and we sell our products here every once a week. Mm. So I had to f find out more about it. That's how I came to join Slow Food. We have an earth market that operates at the district headquarters in Mokono mm. once every week. I had to become a member. And by becoming a member, you have to practice the agroecological agro ways and practices that are involved in the mm. farming and the business enterprise. With Slow Food Uganda, our logo is a, is a snail. Mm. Do you know snail? <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, you know snails, you may not even know that it's moving, mm. but it's always on the move. Mm. So, Slow Food Uganda, we advocate for promoting organic and indigenous crops mm. or seeds so that they don't get extinct mm. because with this modern way things the modern GMOs. world GMOs mm. have become common everywhere so mm. for us we are advocating for the indigenous original seeds and crops mm. to survive and promote them so that people can know about them and always promote them. Slow Food is, always, is an, as an organization, organizes for us workshops, um, exchange visits, where we go to different places and also exchange with other farmers on the same, mm. yes, in a way of promoting one another's ideas about the same. So what challenges have you faced in this? business? There wouldn't be so many challenges, but the problem is that people are not aware of the problem they are facing about the GMOs and the risks involved in the GMOs. I also do my small farming in Teso, mm. like a few things there, here and there, you know, G-nuts and stuff like that. Now, I live here in Kampala, and if I want to join uh, that, uh, the business, what are those benefits that I should look out for? Now, if you are to join the business, one, with, with the slow food, mm. we would recommend engage in the practices that are agroecological. Whereby, we want or we embrace a situation whereby things can coexist. What am I trying to say? That when you take, for instance, nowadays, farmers, no longer want to weed their gardens. Mm. Do you know what they use instead? Chemicals. They use chemicals mm. to spray. 
when the chemicals are sprayed on the on the grass, don't think that the dam the the effect will only re remain on the what? On the weed. On the weed only. Mm. It will still be in the soil. That's why you see that. Of recent, we did not have unsane any mm, all yes. over the place. Mm. Maybe it was as a result of people spraying, interfering with the the, the place where the, the, the what those the grasshoppers they from mm. so such things. So if you are to join slow food, one of the, the main reasons you have to be a person who en encourages or promotes agroecology. So if, if someone is looking for you, where can they find you? Yeah, I have an address, mm. more than two addresses. Mm. I'm a permanent resident of Upper Kauga, mm. Mokono Town Council, mm. Upper Kauga LOC1, where I'm one of the LOC1 committee members. For example, I deal, I process Mokene. Mm. Do you know Mokene? Yes. Have you ever ate Mokene? I love it you so love much. Mokene. Yes. Okay. I go to the lock sh showers, mm. purchase the mokene when it's still fresh, mm. when it's still wet. Mm. Then I have to bring it home, proce fry it, process it, and pack it. Yes. That means that one of my addresses is in, at home. Mm. Then after packing, I have a store in Mokono Tax Park yes. where I sell the spices. Wow. The address is S and B. Products. S and B products. Yes. Can we get you online as well? S and B products. I only use my WhatsApp, my, mm. my WhatsApp line. Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. Mm. So, Madam Sarah, it's very interesting to share with you. You know, that's why they say you can never know who someone is until you've walked through their journey with them. There is something I need to ask you. So many of the young people now are out there looking for out for something to do. People come out of university, they are jobless. Even the ones who are working actually, uh, at a certain point they are jobless. And also COVID has, the, has, has kind of shaped us in a different way. After COVID, everyone knows that besides having a job, you have to have something that can support you. What advice do you have for viewers out there, the women, the girls, and even the men? Dear viewers, Ladies, young girls, and the men, it's high time that everybody wakes up to be very hardworking. The challenge that I'm facing as a leader, like I told you, I'm a, I'm a leader in my community, mm. <clears throat> and there's also a, woman's, a women group that sits at my home mm. every Sunday. I always encourage them, whatever, because I'm also the chairperson, mm. I encourage them to always be hardworking and make sure that there is something that is being earned in the house, in the home. Apart from spending, each coin you get, you spend. Then there will be something that really brings in some money in mm. the house. So people shouldn't minimize any job. We have seen people who have been working jobs that you cannot imagine, mm. but they get some money and this money is used to sustain them and their families. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you, Madam Sarah. Uh, Sarah, I'm really, really happy that I, ha I got time to talk to you. And I believe that even people who are watching must be very happy. You have really inspired so many people out there that I know that after some time they are going to come to that, oh, Madam Sarah, our leader, can you also help my girl or my wife to join this group? But also thank you so much for, you know, giving us your time. We are the ones to appreciate you. We really thank you. Because, you know, once you bring us knowledge like this, we really appreciate. Because people who are out there watching UBC will say, yes, this is what we need. Such content is what we need right now. Because the state that people are, they need something inspiring. And thank you so much for sharing your story. Our viewers out there, thank you so much for watching this show, The Super Soul Sisters. It is nice that you have joined us and also worked with us from the beginning to the end as one of the Super Soul Sisters. My name is Jamila Oluka. And I'll tell you that for you to watch this show again, you can tune on every Wednesday, 9 p.m. Or oh, if you miss that, you can check out every Friday around 11 a.m. for a repeat. If you miss that too, you can join us on our YouTube where you can watch as many times as you want and also enjoy the journey. But as we celebrate this month, I will still say that kudos to our 
one and only guest who has been here with us telling us about agro agroecology. However, I will say that thank you so much for supporting us. My name is Oluka Jamila. Keep watching UBC Inspiring Uganda. Have a, a blessed time.